Morning, Sunday the 20th of August 2017. Welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom Talk, boys and girls. And we'll open the phone line straight away today, just in case we want any early calls this morning. 0 to 0 Anything you want to talk about today, actually. Anything at all. I haven't got too much to tell you about myself, except to say that I've uh, got up this morning, half past seven. Nice cycle to and from church. Um, uh, Vivian who always sits next to me, she did a little bit of a tatting today because the people who give out the communion were a little bit late. He'd already started giving it out and they hadn't got onto the, onto the altar, dear. Shook her she's looking at me like that. <laughs> I love Vivian. Yes. A little bit later on, I'm going to do one of my rice risottos, which I may film today, actually. Uh, the ladies, I did a little, little video. Um, I don't know if I showed it to you, actually. Let me think. Did I show it to you? Um, it was of me... No, I didn't. It was just, just of me eating one of my, um, one of my, um, one of my cooking things. And I put it on the Slimmers Worldwide. I don't think I put it on my wall, actually. And uh, all these ladies said, oh, we enjoyed your video. So I think I might do how to do vegetable risotto today on the, uh, on the video, uh, uh, this afternoon. If I do, if I do it, if I do it, I'll show it to you tomorrow, okay? Bit of gardening going on today, bit of cleaning later on, and that's about it. And I'm ready for the karaoke tonight already. I'm already. Everything is in place. The car is loaded. I'm always full of preparation, dear. That's the secret. Preparation. The car's loaded. All ready for karaoke tonight and every Sunday. Come along if you're in uh, North London tonight. Camden at the, uh, sorry, karaoke at the Camden Eye in Camden Town tonight between 8 and and 10.45, 11 o'clock, okay? Now, can I ask you if I'm... Oh, by the way, I must show you these. Can't wear these anymore. Too big. These are a pair of Ralph Lauren shorts. Look, and th I can't wear them anymore. They're too big. Let's let's see if you can tell by the... Oh, I'm going to have to stand on the bloody chair now. Aren't I? Oh, sorry, I swore. Did I swear? Is that swearing, bloody? No, oh, I don't know. Oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. Let's just see. Let me take off my very expensive jacket. If I can just, sort of, maybe if I can kneel on here, will that work? Does that work? I don't know, Donna. One minute. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that'll work, won't it? Okay. Right, so here, here's my new shorts. I'll have to tuck my shirt in to do this now, won't I? Perhaps I, I should have rehearsed this earlier. Should I, should I, should I, let me just tuck in, tuck in my shirt, and then you'll see, you'll see how it works. Right, here we go. Right, okay. So I think, oh, this, this, this chair keeps twisting. There you go, right. So there's my, look, look. Look! Look at those! That's how much weight I've lost, dear. Hang on a minute, let me put it there. Maybe I... Do you want me to expose a little bit of myself? Just a little bit. Oh, just a little bit. Then, 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 that, then that's... Because that's not quite right, is it? Now, that, that's my scar there you're seeing there. Now, look. So, if I put that there... Hang on, get that out of the way. Because I, I don't want you to say I'm cheating. Here we go. Right, look. So, there we are. That's there. Yeah, that's there. Now, look. Look. Look at all that, dear! That's four inches there. Thank you. Four inches. Mind you, girls, what can you do with four inches? Nothing is the answer, dear. Go away. Send another one over, please. Four inches. Do me a favour. So I can't wear those anymore. And they were expensive, they were. Ralph Lauren. I think it must be about 42 waist or something like that. Very, very pleased. Ah, good. There we are. Let's say hello to some of our early adopters this morning. Good morning to the lovely Wayne Martin. Um, he said he doesn't... He, don't you like my music? Do, 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 do. I love that music. I love it. Morning to the lovely Mary Warren, who's with us this morning. Lovely Irish Mary. Good morning, Mary. Are you along tonight to entertain the masses of Camden Town? I do hope so. Do hope so. Good morning to the lovely Diane, as always. First to like the show. Good morning, Diane. Rod Brown's there this morning. Julian Clark. Good morning, Julian. All right. Uh, Jamie Horrocks. Good morning, Jamie. Ray Reynolds. Morning all. What a beautiful day for pushing a cucumber for a lady's letterbox and shouting, aye, aye, missus, the Martians have landed. <laughs> I love it. Natey Anthony Daniels says, what, are you, what am I doing? Nothing. At least eight. Exactly, Natey. Is it Natty or Natty? At least eight. Minimum, minimum. Good morning to Jerry. Good morning, Jerry. And good morning to the lovely Shania, who is with us uh, nice and early on this morning as well. Good morning, Shania. Now, can I ask you, I want to ask you something. Is my mate being fussy with this? Okay. Na Nate, is it Nate? Natey? Natty? I don't know how to say that. N-A-T-E. Nat? Natey? Okay. Is it one? 
Nat. Oh. Na Natey. Natty. Did I get it right last night? I can't remember now. Oh, God, I can't. I can't do that. I'm very good. It's a Natty. Natty. Is it Natty? Is it Natty? Good morning to John Child. Well, it's been a while since we saw you, John. Are you coming to the cam tonight? Tonight's about to take you and make an appearance here. Now, let me ask you. Is my mate being fussy here? Okay. Right. You remember a few weeks ago, I bought some uh, new trainers from Polo Ralph Lauren. Special offer, half price, £42 they were. Anyway, my mate ordered, wanted me to order two pairs, so he had a pair as well. So I bought him a pair, uh, and I bought myself a pair. And of course, we've had them for a couple of weeks. Now, I've got to tell you, good morning, Dino. I've got to tell you that new trainers... Tend to stay in my cupboard. Oh, hang on. Was there a bit of an echo on there? I've just, I just realised my, my echo was on them. Let's turn it off. Um, new trainers can suddenly sit in my wardrobe for months and months and months. Because I kind of, I know, <laughs> honestly, I'm not, I'm not, I keep things for best. You may remember I bought two Ted Baker shirts a few weeks ago. You've only seen one, haven't you? I keep them for best and eventually they come out. I don't like to take them out of the wrapper. I've now got, Three pairs of trainers in that cupboard. I won't need to buy trainers for about five years now. That's the truth. Anyway, so I bought these two pairs of trainers. They've sat in the cupboard for about three weeks, maybe four weeks now. And then Ronnie rings me up and says, oh, I've just got my trainers out of their packet. And he says, there's a glue mark on them. You're going to have to send them back. Now, I hate sending stuff back. I really hate sending stuff back. It's such a pain. Wrap it up. Print off a label. Take it to the post office or take it to the... I hate sending stuff back. And I'm like, oh. He said, it's all right, don't worry. If you give me the email address, I'll deal with it all so I can get them changed, okay? Now, my mate is very, very fussy. If I was a decorator, carpet layer, DIY man... <laughs> DIY man. Not, not DIY man. If I was any of those things, I would not want to do a job for him. That's how fussy he is. He's really, really fuck The tiny, if he was to buy, like for example, he had a, a screen put over his his iPhone a while ago now, and he said, "Oh look, it's it's cracked." And I'm like, "I'm like where?" He said, can't you see where the crack is? I said, no, give it here. And I'm looking at this thing and I cannot see. He said, look, right in the corner on the edge. And th honestly, there is, good morning, Tony. There is the tiniest little nick that you could see. I mean, you've got to have a magnifying. That's how fussy he is. OK, so he's bought these trainers. I said, bring them around and let's have a look. Me knowing I've got exactly the same pair in my cupboard. OK. So I'm going to show them to you now. They're still in their wrapping. All right? Okay, still in their wrapping. Oh, 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 oh. oh, God. Don't you love new things? I love opening a new book. Oh, I've got a new book here, haven't I? I told you. Did I tell you I've got a new book? It's here. Look. Oh, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Oh, there's nothing better than a new magazine. Do you like smelling new magazines? I mean, I don't really buy magazines anymore. I used to buy a magazine called Stuff and T3. It's got all gadgets and things like that. I love it. Oh, I love a new book. That's Pig Heart Boy. It's about a boy. Uh, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't opened it yet. Uh, it's about a boy who is given a pig's heart because he's, he's got a bad heart. Bless him. Anyway, back to these. Okay, so I'll get out the two trainers now. One moment. I want you to look at these carefully. Don't forget there's a phone line open as well, boys and girls. 0208144 Let's get them out of this. Is it all in little bags? Ralph Lauren, dear. None of this going in blooming JD Sports. There you go, mate. Chuck them in a carrier bag. None of that business. Look, anyway. So I'm going to show these to you now. Right, I want you to look carefully. Okay? Look carefully at these two trainers. Good morning to Christina, who says, Strange morning, looked out the window to see a horse pulling a cart. Walking up and down the street. <laughs> My neighbour has several and took them to a field in a garage. Where do you live, Christina? So, OK, so that's one side, OK? Right, going to show the other side. Look carefully. Look carefully. OK? Show the other side there. And now... Actually, it looks like there's... One minute. Is that... 
Now, it, that looks like there's something... Or is it that one? Hang on a minute. Oh, I think it was just the way I was holding it in the light. Oh, no, there it is. There it is. Oh, it is. Hang on a minute. Okay, I was just spotted that there. Does that come off? No, it doesn't. That's okay. That doesn't matter. Okay, so, so look at these carefully. Remember they're going to be on your feet, okay? All right? And now look at the front of them. All right? There's, there's the front. I'll, I'll hold it like that. Can you see a problem with those at all? Any, anything wrong there that you, that you would see there? Dino says the black and white stripe. Uh, there is no black and white stripe, darling. It's blue. <laughs> Are you watching in colour, dear? You want to get yourself one of those new colour monitors? <laughs> oh, Dino, you make me laugh. OK. Right. So here. What's black? There's there's no old oh, the back. The back. The back white stripe. No, nope, I can't see a back white stripe anywhere. All right. No. Okay. So Ronnie wants to send these back for that. Can you see that? A bit closer. Look on this one. Right at the front there, there is a tiny little glue dot, which is underneath. So you can't get it off. He wanted me to send them back for that. And I'm like, I, I said, I said, really? He said, I said, you must be joking. He said, well, it shouldn't be like that when you buy it. He said, it's not, it's not right. It's not perfect. Should be perfect when you. So he wanted to send them back for that there, for that tiny little thing there. I said, oh, for Christ's sake, just go up into my cupboard and have a look at mine. He said, he said, no, no. He said that doesn't matter. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll look after it all. All I need is the email address and all that, and I'll write to them. And I thought, just go upstairs and get mine out of the cupboard and have a look. So he's got mine out of the cupboard either, and they're, of course they're perfect, my ones. There's nothing wrong with them at all. So um, he's taken those, and he didn't, you know, I didn't have to do that, and he didn't have to take them. Uh, but I said, oh, just just take those ones. Save the aggravation of, of sending it all back. Would you have sent those back, though, for that? Please tell me. I don't think he noticed the bit on the side. There's a, there is a little bit on the side as well. I could, I could probably... No, I can't get it off. No, it, it's like kind of... No, I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's, it's, just, it's just a bit of glue, for Christ's sake. I mean... Oh, there it is. That's off. Gone. Nearly gone. Nearly gone. It's just a little bit there. So it's just the tiniest mark there and here as well. And I don't know. I mean, why would you bother for that tiny thing? I mean, for, for trainers as well. Come on. It's not like they're shoes. You know, these are just trainers, like normal everyday things that you just wear out to go to the shops and the things like that. And I just don't see the point of sending something back like that. I have to say, uh, a similar incident uh, this week, actually. One of my um, tenants, I'm, I'm a landlord. Uh, I've got a, a few places. I've got a place up north. And um, something was wrong with the tiles. I can't, maybe some tiles had come off the wall or or the the the, uh, the ceiling, you know, the, the what's that S sticky white stuff around the edge. Or that had become uh, uh, old. And decrepit, a little bit like myself. And um, so I sent someone over there, or, or at least the estate agent sent someone over there to uh, have a look at it. And, and work was done. And the tiles were taken off the wall and re-put on the wall, I think. Or, or tiles were put over those tiles or something like that. And um, the lady sent the estate agent a picture. She said, I wanted you to see this picture to check the landlord is happy with the work because the plumber, tiler type person, had chipped one of the tiles right at the bottom in the corner. And honestly, I looked at this picture and I'm like, well, where is the chip? She had looked right down on the right-hand side, right in the corner. It's just got chipped off the edge. And I'm, look I'm like this. Oh, yes, yeah, sir, it is. I said, no, that's fine. I said, is the tenant happy? And bless her heart, she said, yeah, the tenant's happy, but she's a bit worried that when she moves out, 
you'll charge her for that chip. I said, I'm not going to charge her for that chip. But on the other hand, of the, you know, not all landlords are like me. Some of them are bastards. They, I'm sorry to use that word. They really are awful. Some landlords. I mean, I, do, I actually know a few landlords. They're all sort of fairly good, like myself. But some land, I mean, you know, boilers go wrong and they don't, they don't replace it. Just dreadful. And they put their rents up, like, you know, 20% or more in a year. I mean, how can you do that to someone? Especially someone that's been your tenant for years and years. I've got one lady... She's been in a flat. It's in Bracknell, actually. Uh, all, all of my places are in Bracknell, except one, which is up north, uh, actually near my sister. And um, this this lady who's in the one in Bracknell, uh, she's been with me for 15 years. And do you know what I put, up, put her rent up? It goes up £10 per month once a year. That's it. I put her rent up. Because everything has to go up, you know. It was all, you know, my costs go up. Everything has got. I put her rent up ten pounds per month, once a year. That's not bad, is it? Eh? That's not bad at all. But you hear of some other people, uh, probably some of you rent places, and you've seen your rent. I mean, what, what, what? If you rent a place, I'd love you to tell me uh, if you if you think you've had a big jump. Do, do let me know. Put a message on here or you can call in 0208 There are some dreadful landlords. And you know, if you're not happy, it's pointless rowing with these people. Just move out and find someone else. Dreadful people. Dreadful people. Um, let's have a look at some of your messages then. Uh, Mary says, yes, the left one is a bit dodgy at the front. Yeah, you saw the right thing there, Mary. But would you have sent that back? Paul, I'm not a, I'm anything but a saint, Paul. I'm anything but a saint. <laughs> Christina says, only send them back if you can get another pair of money off for the future. I wouldn't bother with that tiny little thing like that. Good morning, Daniel. Rod said, years ago, I was surrounded by shoe factories and shoe workers and being from Northamptonshire and the trainers would be rejected and passed to jobbers normally ended up at the markets. Yeah, people you never used to um, bother with trainers, did they? We didn't have trainers at school. Never had them. Didn't exist. We had shoes and we had plimpsoles. That was it. There were no trainers. Mary says I'm a money grabber. Do me a favour, Mary, will you? Dear me. Money grabber, £10 a month. <laughs> I'm a very, very reasonable people. Very, very reasonable person. Mary agrees with the thing about the shoes as well. I, I, I think it's dreadful. It really is. Right. Um, Bruce Forsyth fans. If you missed it last night, it's probably on the iPlayer now. Uh, there was a programme about Bruce Forsyth on BBC One, Colour, last night, OK? It was just before casualties. So if you go on the iPlayer thing and look at BBC One Saturday night schedule or Saturday night programmes that are just gone, you should find the tribute to um, Bruce Forsyth being interviewed by Miranda. Now, I haven't seen that, so I'm looking forward to uh, perhaps watching that this afternoon after I've had my dinner. OK, uh, I'm also watching a film at the moment. Uh, uh, now, I can't remember the title. Perhaps you'll know what it is. It's about these Polish and Russian people who years ago, and they didn't agree with the, the, the whole Stalin thing and all that, and they were kind of ex... I don't know what the word is. Excommunicated? Ex... Expelled from Russia to Siberia, to this prison place in Siberia. Um, and they escape from it and they find their way, I think, to Tibet. I'm, I'm not quite at the end of it yet. It's really good. Very good film. And it shows, you know, Siberia and it's like, you know, really cold. And they get these, um, what's that? You know, that when that really cold wind blows very hard in Siberia and one of them freezes to death, I think. Yeah, he does. One of them freezes to death. And then it goes from there. And then they're in, they're in the summer period and they're out and the sun is beating down on them and there's no water. And another one dies in the heat uh, and they start seeing mirages of, of, of water. And it's just nothing. The desert It's just nothing. It's just desert for as far as you can see. No trees to hide under, no rocks to shelter you from the sun. Can you just imagine being out in that? Must be awful being in the desert. I don't know where I'd rather be, to be honest, in the desert or 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 or, or, or Siberia. 
trying to save myself from the cold, but awful, awful. So I don't know what that uh, film was called, but it was on four four films or, or something like that the other day. Now, here's a question for you. If you're in another country... Oh, by the way, thank you to those of you sharing the show on your wall this morning. Very kind of you to do so. Thank you very much. OK, uh, if you're in another country, do we know... Because years ago we were talking about we talked about this several times continuity announcers on the television. Now we still have them on BBC One. We don't have them on ITV. Well, we have them on ITV, but they used to be in Vision. I was talking about Tom Edwards the other day. David Hamilton used to do it. Philip Ellsmore was my favourite one on uh, Thames Television. But this bloke he would come on like like I'm doing now, but he'd come on in between the programmes, have a little bit of a chat with you, and he'd say, "And now Crossroads." Da da da, bum bum bum, meow meow meow, ba ba ba, down 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 down. So a continuity announcer, the bloke in the middle. Do they still do that in other countries? There must be somewhere where they still do that. If you know that, let us know because I'd be really interested in that. I'm not sure. I think the last place in the UK to do that was Ulster. Uh, Ulster Television in Northern Ireland. Uh, there was this very camp man on there that that did. I don't know if he's still on there or not, uh, but I know they used to do it in Northern Ireland. Is there any other countries that used to do that? Because I'd be very interested to know that. Do let us know. Send us a, uh, a message or something. Mary, got trouble with your internet? Have you, my love? We'll pay the bill, dear. Oh, Mary, honestly, dear, she's one of those people that she holds on to the money for as long as possible. Mary, didn't you, love? Eh? OK, uh, some news stories for you today. I won't be with you too long today because I do want to start uh, doing my dinner. How long have I chatted? Oh, I've been 22 minutes already. Look at this. Here's a lovely story. The Bionic Boy. Look at this, lad. We like stories like this. World first as he gets artificial hands and can now ride his bike. Look at that. Isn't that a lovely thing? Eh? Isn't it marvellous? Some of the things we can do now. Sadly, not. we can't fix everything, though, can we? You know? Sometimes people get given a little bad bit of news and it's like, well, I'm afraid we can't do anything for you. Uh, but we can do some wonderful things. Reading a bike and eating with a knife and fork maybe seem easy activities for an 11-year-old to carry out. This was in yesterday's Daily Mail. But for Alan Gifford, they're a whole new world after he had a second bionic hand fitted last week. The boy from Swansea is thought to have become the youngest in the world to have two prosthetic hands. He had both his amputated at the age of three after complications arising from a heart condition. His first state-of-the-art official hand was fitted in 2015 after his family raised £30,000 with the help of donors nationwide. Supporters continued to help, meaning he could have the second hand made and fitted. So you know, it's very expensive to do something like that. Look at that. Isn't that a wonderful story there? Just a, a lovely story, you know, and um, just because you're, you're missing a hand or something like that doesn't mean you can't do everything, uh, you know, that even perhaps not as easily as everyone else can do, but you can certainly do things. Uh, there was a lovely girl, I won't name her, there was a lovely girl I worked with in, uh, in a pub just a couple of years ago and she only had one hand. She was a barman, uh, barman, bar lady, she was a bar lady. You know, you can still do these things. She was wonderful. You know, it, why, why should it stop you? Uh, it says, uh, and the boy says, all my friends like my new hands as well. Now he calls himself Bionic Boy and is the envy of his seven brothers and sisters. Isn't that lovely? I'll show it to you once more. Look at that. Lovely, lovely story there of uh, the little Bionic Boy. That's wonderful, that is. I do like stories like that. Um, once again, gang... We're all going to be poisoned or we're all going to die of something due to the stuff we eat. It doesn't seem now to be a day goes past without a problem with our food supply. And I've got two for you this morning. First of all, banger bug fear in this morning's super soar away sun. Oh, yes. Bugs that can, a bug that can cause liver cirrhosis isn't found in UK pigs but 60 infections have been traced back to an unnamed supermarket. Name that super... We need to name that supermarket. Who's protecting this supermarket? We need to name it. Public Health England's warning came after scientists traced the shopping habits of patients found to have the HEV C3-2 strain of hepatitis E. I didn't know there was an E. I've heard of an A, a B... 
Hepatitis C. Hepatitis. I haven't heard of a D or an E. Have you? It's transmitted by sausages. 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 They are like surgery right for eating dead animals, doesn't it? I told you, become a vegetarian. You don't have any of this if you're vegetarian. It's transmitted by sausages and pork products from Europe. Ah, uh, there you go. They're trying to kill us all. I knew it. They won't stop, will they? Always, if it's not a bomb, it's something to do with food. They try everything, but we carry on because we are British. Land of hope and glory. Yes. Uh, the food's mainly from Holland and Germany, as UK pigs do not have the strengths, like the eggs. Last week, if you bought British eggs, you wouldn't be having a problem. Yes. The findings have caused such... By British, I was in Waitrose yesterday. I was in Waitrose yesterday and I picked up these green beans because I'm doing a vegetable risotto. I told you already uh, this afternoon for dinner. Picked up these green beans and I said to the wife, I said, look, they're all the way from Guatemala. I hope they wash their hands first. I said to her. And she said, oh, no, she said, don't buy those. And she, she, she gave me these. She said, there you are. Buy British, she says. She said, I'm a great believer if there's the British alternative, which shouldn't be the alternative. That should be the norm. If the British one is there, buy the British one. She added me these green beans grown by uh, farmer, farmer Fred in Somerset or somewhere like that. So I rapidly put down the foreign products, boys and girls, and purchased the green beans at the same price. They weren't even more expensive. Buy British, and you won't have these problems of all these infections. The findings have caused such a worry, blood donations are now being screened for the virus, as well as donated organs and tissues. So please, boys and girls, if you're thinking of donating a pair of lungs or a heart or something like that, then please, please stop eating sausages from abroad. <laughs> you must <laughs> stop eating those sausages and eggs from abroad. Buy British. How many times do I have to tell you? It's the only way to stay safe. Stay safe. There's another one here. Tesco's this time. You think you're safe with chocolate, do you? Oh, no, no. In this morning's Daily Mirror, swing into the left there, just for Mary. Swing into the left. OK, swing into the left with the Daily Mirror this morning. Supermarket giant Tesco's tells customers to return items to stores after safety fears. Fears may contain metal or glass or have the wrong allergy information. Oh, well, it's all there. It's all there, isn't it? Metal, glass or allergies. God's sake. Chocolate which would contain or could contain salmonella, is among thousands of products recalled by Tesco's. So you wouldn't think that, would you? Buying a bar of chocolate could damage your health. Well, it did me. All the fat that I had gathered around my waist, which is nearly all gone. Only, it? only nine more, no, is it nine and a half. Only nine and a half pounds to go. Yes. Um... The supermarket giant Tesco's published a list of recalls, including soup and children's toys, as customers are warned to return products to their nearest store as soon as possible. Take them back and get a refund quickly. Mary says you are having a giraffe. No, I'm no, don't eat giraffes, Mary. That's really cruel, giraffes. I mean, what harm have they done to you? Well, you've got giraffe burgers today. Mary's having a barbecue tomorrow, aren't you? Which I was invited to. Sadly, I can't come because I'm asleep at that time. Mary's having a barbecue. Lots of dead animals being turned around on the top of her barbecue, I suppose. I hope they're British ones, Mary. British deer. Don't buy none of that foreign muck. Thank you. Um, other reasons for the mass recall are because some of the items may contain metal or glass or because they contain incorrect allergy information. This included Maltesers and Gal Galaxy. I used to love Galaxy. Oh, God. I haven't had a bar of Galaxy for 10 weeks. <laughs> I have my Slimmer's World chock bars. Only three sins and 97 calories per bar, I think they are. Mars Chocolate UK. Um, uh, sorry, this included Maltesers and, Galaxy bar, uh, Maltesers and Galaxy bars, which have been recalled by the manufacturer over fear of, cer uh, fear of certain batches may contain salmonella. Mars Chocolate UK said items from its Galaxy range, including the 200 gram bar, 
four by 42 grams multipack. Oh, it's a call rushing in, rushing into the studio. Who's calling in on line 17? Yeah. Is that non-Irish Mary from Ireland? This is. Greetings, Mary. Mm, greetings. Turn me off on your computer and try and sound a bit Thank happier. You, For dear. God's sake, woman, you sound as miserable as sin this morning. Have you just got up? Well, I'm sorry. No, no, I've, I've been up for a while. How dare you? Yes. You know, I'm not having a giraffe on a barbecue. Well, that's what you wrote there. It's for all to no, see. No, you, you said, you are, are you having a giraffe? You're having a laugh. How can you eat giraffes, dear? That's a terrible I thing. What do you have? Eat the giraffe. I what do you have? The leg, the cheek, them. the stomach? What do you have? The neck. The neck? Oh, you'd get a lot out of that, wouldn't you? Because they're quite long. Yeah, yeah. Like your yeah, legs. Your legs are very neck. long, aren't they? Listen, you can't, you can't stop people eating sausages. Sausages. Terrible, dear. So Do you know how those little pigs have suffered, crammed in those tiny little cages? And even the ones that haven't suffered have been running around in the fields have been shot in the pigs head. Pigs are not kept in cages. You've mistaken them for chickens. Pigs are okay. not what? Pigs are not kept in cages. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Gestation cages. Pigs are not kept in cages. Not all of them. A lot of them are. Have a look on YouTube. Dies. Have a look on YouTube. Factory farming pigs. No, I have a don't look. want to have a look at they are. There you go. There you go. There you go. Hiding your head in the sand. Don't want to know. I don't know that I would be an ostrich. Then. An ostrich? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, you've got the legs to have be an ostrich. an ostrich egg? Uh, I, I think tonight... Uh, to, uh, maybe not tonight... For tomorrow night, you need to come and act like an ostrich tomorrow. I like the idea of that. Uh, when have you ever seen me stick my head in the sand? Uh, no, not necessarily stick your head in. Just the way you walk around in the pub tomorrow. You must be like an ostrich. Thank you. Oh, struck me. <laughs> Christina's Bruce, just Bruce. sent a little message here She said it's lovely sunny barbecue weather in Portsmouth Fresh horse meat, horse meat to be had Oh not little horses Tiny little horses running around oh, no, here Be no, there, no, throat no. eat them You have to go to France for that Bonjour, comment ça va Thank you, Portsmouth is quite close to France oh, Yes it is, just across the water Mary yeah, that's where they get the horses from. <laughs> the oh, <laughs> poor little horses. Poor little horses. Oh, the Buddha, Buddha, Buddhas. Anyway, listen, have a great day, everybody. I'm going to go and do some knitting in the garden. Enjoy your knitting. Are you along tonight, Mary, to entertain the millions? Uh, might be. Pop along tonight. Might be. How, how much are you going to pay me? Oh, I, I you'll you'll be able to sit there. You'll be able to sit there and look at my smile. There, you don't need oh, any payment. Oh, it's so rewarding. That I thought so. Have you been to church yet, Mary? Yeah. What hymns did you have today? Abide with me. Oh, really? What? What? Why is it? Was it a funeral as well? No, no, no. It was just my own private church. Oh, so you haven't been to church this morning? <laughs> Uh, disappointing. Oh, neither of you. Oh, uh, yes, I have. With me. How dare you? Yes, I have. Uh, uh, our final, our uh, first hymn this morning was Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us. Lead us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us, All the World's Temptations See. Shall I carry on? Nice. Guard us, cut. No? Okay. <laughs> right, go on. Do, you, do your job. Cheerio, Mary. Nearly See you said, later. <laughs> there we are. Mary calling in from uh, Chalk Farm there. Let me just add that one. Where are we? <laughs> She's great, Mary. She's such a wonderful character. She really is. Uh, 0208 if you want to call us today. Uh, pig pens. Thank you, Christina. Pig pens. Yes, some pigs uh, are, do, in fact, run around Rome, but it's, it's the factory ones. It does my head in. Um... 
when you see that sort of thing uh, on the on the uh, on the videos and that. Uh, back to the story here. Yes, uh, Galaxy Minstrel, Galaxy Counters, Maltesers, Maltesers, Teasers. What are they? Maltesers, Teasers. I don't know what they are. Gosh. Oh. The company said, this is Tesco's, a small number of products distributed in the UK and Ireland. Oh, the Iris as well. I've got to clear the shelves as well. There you go. Uh, and Ireland could be affected, but no other brands or varieties were part of the recall. Even Tesco creamy leek and bacon cooking sauce. Best before end of July 2018 with a batch code of 7031. A manufacturing fault has been found. Affecting a single batch of Tesco creamy leek and bacon cooking sauce. It may contain egg, which is not declared on the label. Well, how did it get through security? You've got to declare everything as you come through that security channel, haven't you? Shocking, shocking what's going on in these supermarkets. It really is. 0208 144 uh, phone number. Now, what else have I got here? Let's have a look here. Now, also on the subject of supermarkets this morning... In, uh, in the mail, shoppers are being fooled by supermarket copycat products of popular brands of everything from breakfast cereal to shampoo. You're not picking up the right ones. Or maybe you are. Because you go to Audi and Lidl and they make the packaging look the same as if you were buying a branded product. Except it's a lot cheaper. You know that to be true, don't you? I mean, for example, I buy unsweetened soya milk. Audi, 59 pence. Waitrose, it's a pound. It's a big difference. What's the other, what, what's the other thing that, I, that uh, I, I bought this week that was really cheap in there? Oh, gosh, I can't remember now. Can't remember. Although I have to say, was that Audi start doing plants as well sometimes. They're not cheap and they're not particularly good. What happens with the Audi plants? They they all come in, say, on the Thursday, and they look fantastic. By, by Saturday, no one has watered them. They don't look after their plants in Audi, unfortunately. Um, it says, a new study has found that 20% of shoppers will mistakenly pick up a copy when it's on the same shelf as the branded product. This rises to 64% when only the copy is on the shelf. So there we are, some of those branded... Do, do you... Um, See, the real, the real ones are up here. For example, what we got here? Uh, Kellogg's Special K. Kellogg's Special K. There, okay. That looks very similar, doesn't it? And that is Audi Harvest Morn something or other. Uh, the, the, one, one of the ones that really stood out for me was the Lurpak. Lurpak there, okay. Which is a little bit blurry, isn't it? Lurpak there. And they do a Norpak in Audi, which is that one there. And they look very, very similar on the uh, on the supermarket shelves. It's so easy. But then again, you know, that, that's how they sell them. Make them look uh, even the same, OK? Uh, Christina says, cheese is cheap at Audi and Lidl. Yes, um, I haven't had cheese for some time now uh, since I started on the Slimmers World. But there was a particular cheese. What, what's the... Um, I can't remember what it's called now. It's... Um, you You can deep fry it. What cheese is that? Oh, you can deep fry it. Oh, it's, it's a bit rubbery. Oh, gosh, I can't remember now. It's, it's oh, what's it? Uh, oh, what's that cheese? Oh, you, you can you can have it like that and chips <coughs> in some places. Humuni? 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 What's it called? Grilled cheese is nice, Mary, on a bit of toast. Is it human? Humini, humini shoes. Hang on a minute. What if I humini? Is it humini? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. Humini cheese. No, that's not it. It's not it, is it? Someone know? <clears throat> humini cheese. Human cheese. Human cheese. <laughs> what the hell's that? Halloumi. That's it. Halloumi. Halloumi. Thank you, Christina. Halloumi, Mary. Thank you. Halloumi cheese. I used to have that. You, you, there's, there's some of the restaurants you can order that instead of, you know, having fish or something like that. Uh, you can order uh, deep fried halloumi cheese with chips, which I have to say is absolutely delicious. It really is with some uh, peas or some sort of vegetables on the side there. Mm, very, very nice. All right, boys and girls, we'll wrap up there. Just a short show for you today. Uh, don't forget tonight it's karaoke. 
That's at the King's Head Theatre Bar. No, it's not. Tonight is karaoke at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. That's every Sunday between 8 and 10.45. It's a lovely night. Nice and lively in there. Uh, I think Mary will be down there. Uh, Roy will be down there tonight. I know that for sure. So if you want to come along tonight, karaoke tonight and every Sunday at the Camden Eye in Camden Town between 8 and 10.45. Just time to do today's uh, birthdays, boys and girls. Happy birthday on this Sunday to... One moment, please. Please hold the line while we try and connect to it. Oh, there was a message here. Is that is that for the... um? Uh, where are we? There we go. Happy birthday this morning to Phyllis Clark Stinson. Happy birthday, Phyllis. To Jordan, who I work with at Central Station. Young Jordan. I didn't know it was your birthday. Don't Happy birthday, my good friend Jordan. We've got a lovely load of staff at Central Station. We really are. It's a real family-type atmosphere working there. I love it. I love it. I don't like working in corporate environments. I find them very, very boring. Very boring, very, very money, 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 money. That's all they ever talk about, these blimming corporates. It's a lovely family atmosphere at uh, Central Station. Jordan is one of the assistant managers there. Happy birthday to you, Jordan, OK? Happy birthday to the lovely Linda Cummings. It's her birthday today. Married to uh, a lovely chap, actually, called Tony. Uh, Linda and Tony, they owned the cherry tree, which was in Dulwich that I worked at for about two years, I think it was. And also the Golden Lion in Sydenham, where I worked at for about a year and a half uh, with a karaoke. But it, it kind of stopped working there. So uh, uh, so I, so we uh, uh, bang that on the head there. But uh, happy birthday to you, Linda. I hope you're doing very well, my darling. OK, uh, 35 years old today to Vuvette Newman. Happy birthday, Vuvette. And Charlotte Louise Stanhope is today 38 years old. A nice young age there, my darling. Here comes the song. I'll get all your names in today as well. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Phyllis, Jordan, Linda, Vivette and Charlotte. Happy birthday to you. I'm not sure if I'm saying Vivette correctly. V-E-U, V-E-T-T-E, Vuvette, Vivette, Vuvette, how would you say it? What do you reckon? I'm not quite sure. Even Mary's wishing Jordan happy birthday. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice. Okay, day, boys and girls. Uh, we're off then. Have a lovely Sunday. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio now.